So say for example, if I was trading a different way and someone said to me, Mark, this is the way you can improve your performance uh, by doing this, 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 and this, this is holding you back. Would I not listen? Of course I would. I'd be all ears because I'm a forever, I'm a student of the market still. I'm forever learning and I want to evolve and become the best trader that I can be. And I believe that I'm doing that. So by helping others do that, why wouldn't I want to share that? <laughs> Hey guys, hope everybody's well. Welcome to episode seven, and I really hope you've been enjoying these episodes. So for those of you that haven't already, I highly recommend that you go check out the last episode, which is five tips to becoming a more successful trader. These are some really, really key details. Love the feedback and the comments so far, and feel free to leave any suggestions, and we'll make a video on it. So in this episode, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about my previous journey. As you can see from the title, why, is, why I believe support and resistance is holding you back. It's because it held me back massively. Now it's not to say that you can't make money trading support and resistance or that there is no support and resistance. It's just a different way of looking at the markets. We often get so many questions, so many through you know Instagram, all over social media. Why are your charts like this? Why don't you have EMAs? Why don't you have support and resistance? And how do you structure your charts that way? Well, what happened to me in my previous history of trading, I used to feel like a lot of trades would hold me back. I would cut trades short and I didn't really know why. I would just kind of say, well, there's a support there, so I'm just gonna close it here or there's a moving average there, so uh, surely it's not gonna break that, etc. and I'm just gonna close it there. And then I would go back and back test. It was only when I started to look, look at that and realize, well, that trade, that trade, that trade, and so many positions would then go on and bank 10, 15%, etc. And I would feel like, well, why am I closing it there? Is this an imaginary kind of barrier? And I've always incorporated patterns, right? So I've traded patterns since I was 18 years old. So patterns has always been a big thing, and what helped me is to kind of strip those things back and focus on the structure, the patterns, how we're looking at it. So it's not that you, you can't do well out of it because I still found good results from it. It's just that what really accelerated me to a whole new level was to realize that that support, that resistance, et cetera, is not really that important as what I thought it was or what people thought it was. So I'll show you in a couple of minutes in the charts just how we kind of structure that. And I wanna give you a few tips. No matter what strategy you're trading, I think this can help you out. Even if you actually are trading support and resistance, I highly recommend that you at least include one point that I'm gonna to cover today. I think it's gonna help you out. Currently looking at pound CAD at the moment. If you remember from the last episode, we were short on pound CAD and this was actually a trade that we just, this is quite fitting actually, because I just missed this position. So we did take 4.9% on this trade from pound CAD to the downside. We did take another 2% on that scaling as well. But overall structure, it's still looking good. And this is a great example of this particular structure. So as we can see pound CAD here on the daily chart. So as you can see pound CAD with this particular structure, what you have to realize as a trader, the market wants you to be patient. And often when you rush things, it's from that fear of missing out. And the reason why you have the fear of missing out is because you somehow think that it's that one position that if you don't catch it, you're not gonna get the trade, right? But the truth is there are so many positions within the market, you just have to keep things as simple as possible and you have to plan for the probable and the possible, which is what I was talking about in the last episode, right? So within this particular structure, we know that from the real percentage, the real money is made once we've broken this particular structure all the way to the outer structure. Now within that, is there just gonna be one position or is there gonna be multiple? That's what you need to realize as a trader. There are tons and tons of opportunity in the market. So when it comes to something like this, I literally, essentially missed this trade by 15, 20 minutes. It completely dropped to the downside. Lovely entry at the top there. Has some good candle shape formation at the top of the structure. Very, very clean. So this one would be running, I believe about 4% at the moment. But again, there's gonna be multiple entries. So it's about not having that fear that, you know, that's that one trade. Think of it like this. If you thought that there was only one bus a day, right, or one train a day, what's the chances of you having the fear of coming, going there early or getting there late, right? Because you think that there's only one, so you know I need to get there before, etc. and that's often where you get hurt. But if you knew that there was 10 trains a day or 10 buses a day, would you then have that fear that you're not gonna get to the, your destination, etc.? No, because you know there's multiple ones that are always going to be there for you to get to where you need to be. It's the same within the markets. Once you realize, and that comes from back testing guys and girls, you can't just you know, develop that mindset overnight. You need to see it on a subconscious level that, wow, well usually within that structure, there's at least three, four, five setups. So why am I forcing that one position? Is it that one hit wonder that's gonna make me successful? 
definitely not guys and girls. So remember, multiple, multiple entries, but pound cad, really nice trade, Falcon community, very likely that you took that really clean entry. And again, a lot of the bigger percentage is gonna be when we completely break, break that structure and there will be multiple entries. So guys and girls, I'm just gonna head up to the charts now. Sometimes I like to come down here and you know change a bit of the scenery and actually stand up. We're often in our desk all day long, just sitting down. I'm just gonna head up on the charts. I'm gonna do a bit of a screen share and show you what I'm talking about. And remember, there's gonna be a few tips that I think that will massively help you out. So let's go take a look. How's it going everyone? So I just wanna dive into the charts now and just explain to you quite briefly just how I made the transition and what used to happen. So it's not to say that it can't work or anything like that. Uh, it's actually not to, to even uh, suggest that, that you can't do it that way because I actually have friends and I know people that trade uh, this kind of way and they've done reasonably well. Personally, did I feel like it held me did it held me back a lot? Yes, massively. And that was reflected in the data and when I really started to understand the power of how to utilize patterns. So let's get into it with a few examples and hopefully you take some tips away from that and you can reflect on it on your own trading. So I've got three examples here. I want to start off with uh, pound dollar, then do dollar yen and dollar cad, give you an example. So starting off with pound dollar, quite simply, this is of course not how our charts look, but I'm just giving you a brief introduction. We actually have some free training on this. I already, highly recommend you go and do that because I, I completely break it down. The link is in, it's in one of the bits on YouTube in the description, I believe. So go check that out if you haven't already. And if you can see here in pound dollar, so we're here on the daily chart. So let's say for example, we've got this particular structure. It's natural to have things on people's charts like support, resistance, support. You can see sometimes what you're going to find is that it, it bounces off to the T. You're gonna think, oh, that exactly is that resistance or this is exactly support, etc." So you need to ask yourself the question. It's not that it doesn't work and it doesn't reject off of it. I mean, we can all agree it rejects off of that resistance if you like, but you need to ask yourself, if you're only focused on that and you believe that it's rejecting off of that, how do you know how far it's going to go? Are you going to close trades down short? So let's say for example here on the daily, we've got pound dollar. You can go back in our old webinars and see us talking about this exact example. If we're selling from here, which we did, this is a fantastic trade, what are the chances, and ask yourself and be honest, what are the chances of you closing the trade down here at the daily 50, daily 50 MA? Would you hold straight through that or would your mind think, well, if we look on the uptrend, we kind of just pierce through it, but we keep going back up, we keep going back up. You're gonna see it as some sort of significance. What would make you believe that that's gonna now just drop to the downside? Do you have anything to support that? Well, the difference was for me is that I would take similar trades like that with patterns involved, which I'll show you in a second. And what would happen is that I would still take this as significance. So I would still take the trade based off of a pattern, but I would think, well, that's surely that's gonna stop around here or that's a good place for me to set a target right and then i would see just this just drop straight through and think why didn't i hold that trade and it wasn't just that you know the whole hindsight thing just why didn't i hold that trade because i felt like i should have had more at the market but there, there was clearly something that i didn't know a lack of information or a lack of knowledge that would have been very powerful so for example if we now take a look at what i actually see that as and what i was showing everybody in the community at that particular time is that Let's say you held it here and you happen to have taken this, of course, most likely on the lower degree, let's go to the one hour chart. So let's say you took this on the one hour chart and around the top of this structure, you saw it as a double top with you know most strategies. And let's say you got in with a, let's say you got in with about a 50 pip stop, maybe a little bit more. Let's call it 55, let's call it 60 to be conservative. Let's say you got in with a 60 pip stop at the top. It's not too aggressive, but it's not too wide either. And then you know that the daily 50 is here and around this area. So you would likely be closing at around four point, yeah, nearly 5%. So maybe a little bit more depending on how tight you got into the trade, right? That you would say, well, that's a great trade, you know, bank 5%, I'll move on, etc. What if there was a probability? What if there was a 90% probability, 90% based off of, you know, it's reflected in the data. This isn't my opinion, this is the data. This is probability. What if there was a 90% chance that this is actually your first target, right? What if there's a 90% chance? What does that change? Well, that's the difference between 5% to nearly 10%. So just double, just by knowing. So is knowledge not power? Having that knowledge, is that not powerful to have? So you need to understand why, why is there a 90%? Now, of course, that comes within learning the strategy and things like that. 
but that that was what I really started to focus on because I knew there was a there was patterns there that I was trading, but I would still put too much emphasis and it would confuse me. I would think, well, yeah, that's the pattern. I didn't really understand the true power of the pattern. I would just see, well, it's a reversal pattern, not realizing that there's a certain amount of percentage of when that would happen or when it wouldn't happen. So probability. So that's just on that position there. Bearing in mind, we can, of course, scale into this much tighter, but we're just looking at double just based off of that. And if you can be honest with yourself and say, oh, well, I wouldn't be put off by the EMA, well, then you're probably lying to yourself because you would. If you're trading that way, you're not holding it through that, right? You're probably thinking, oh, there's a bit of a rejection on the four hour or the one hour, and then you're likely closing it down. So if we go down to these areas here, you'll probably close that down, right? Now let's take a look at how we would structure it. So let's remove this. We're still seeing it as a double top, right? We can't argue with that. But rather than having a horizontal line all the way through, what we're doing is we're using a ray line. So essentially, this is just marking on the two most previous points. This is the most relevant bit of data. So although it's tempting to, you know, go to in 1984 and have these trend lines and it bounced off 50 times before, etc. But the truth is, Pattern separation are focusing on the most accurate part. This is the most accurate bit of data that you'll ever get. So let's strip this back and for now, let's actually just hide the EMA. So if we hide it and now we've got just raw price, the best thing that you can do as a trader is understand how to read raw price action and then add in the things that you want. So what I started to do is I started to strip back things like support, resistance, EMAs, and realize I don't actually need that. There's a much more simple way and that would maximize my profit without all of the confusion and the clutter. So then I would take something like this, and this is a very just a clear, a one, two, three touch ascending channel. You can see here's the low, this point here. So now you can see this for what it is. You have the move up, the correction. So essentially you have the impulse, the correction, the continuation. So impulse correction, continuation, and you have a one, two, three, and then you have a one, two, three. So essentially now we're building that case and it's the same reason, but because if this is impulsive to the downside and we're breaking impulsively, especially on the, on the daily chart. So if we go to here, so if we go to the daily and look at that, if we're breaking here impulsively, which we did, which you can see is the reflection here, we even take that data right back. So as you can see, there's momentum there, but can you see how, if you had support resistance and the EMAs and Fibonacci and all that kind of stuff, it's not that it doesn't work or anything like that. It's just that sometimes it can be confusing and it can hold you back and then you, you emotionally close, close positions down. So as you can see, just clear momentum there. If we just go candle by candle, next daily candle, we've broken impulsively enough, now there's a 90% probability that we're gonna to get to this low. There's a few other factors that you need to understand, but of course that's by understanding the full strategy and things like that. But just from a simplistic point of view, what does that change? There's now the difference of you holding a trade from either closing it around this area to here and much further, right? That's just on, on the basic level. And if we go into the one hour chart and we're taking a look at, let's say, that particular trade from the top, We've got so many typical Falcon entries within here. Again, multiple entries. You should never rush positions. There's so many. We're taking this at the top of the structure. And what we're actually doing is anticipating, which I'll do a whole other video on this, which is mass psychology. We're anticipating this to break the high. So when we're looking at it from this perspective, let's say we're getting in with about a 40 pip stop right at the top, but a 40 pip stop. And then we are taking this to the downside. So you usually would have closed around these areas for maybe six, 7% and now we're holding for 15. That's the difference. So, so what is the difference here? Well, we've both seen the same thing. You're both selling, but you're closing your trade short. So sometimes the difference between consistency and not is actually your ability to understand where the market's actually going and not cutting your trade short just because you think there's support or resistance in those areas. So that was the game changer for me. And now I've seen this with hundreds and hundreds of people do exactly the same thing. There's no coincidence, guys and girls, that people that have been struggling for sometimes years come into Falcon trading that type of way and then coincidentally now start becoming consistent. That's not a coincidence why that happens. And what fascinates me even more actually is traders that are consistent trading ways of support and resistance. So let's say there's a trader, they do well, they bank you know five, six percent, sometimes 10 percent per month, because of course it can be done. Those people that come in, always double their returns. I've seen it happen so many times. So if someone's already consistent, you can already read price. You're normally quite good at reading price anyway. And just by understanding how we scale into the market, just by understanding our, our probabilities of not cutting those trades short, it always increases people's returns. So that fascinates me as well. And that's why I'm a big believer in it. You know, If you as a trader right now, so say for example, if I was trading 
a different way. And someone said to me, Mark, this is the way you can improve your performance uh, by doing this, 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 and this, this is holding you back. Would I not listen? Of course I would. I'd be all ears because I'm a forever, I'm a student of the market still. I'm forever learning and I want to evolve and become the best trader that I can be. And I believe that I'm doing that. So by helping others do that, why wouldn't I want to share that? If you, Even if you're already consistent, why wouldn't you want to improve your results? And the only reason why you wouldn't is maybe because your ego is involved, right? And that's so important. Remember why you started trading in the first place. So that's pound dollar, keeping that simple. And then, of course, if you go back to our older webinars, there's a reason why we held trades much further beyond this. But even just looking at that tiny little pattern is the difference between you adding an extra 7-8% to your returns. This is another example. Of course, like I said, in the free training, you can, it was fully broken down, so you can see that. If we go to dollar yen, dollar yen is a prime example, bigger structure, right? It's not just pound dollar. This is across the board. If you're looking at it like this, especially back here, and you're looking at you know, resistance, resistance, support, support, etc. And we're just breaking here. There's particular things that we do within Falcon, especially from a pattern perspective, that helps us to understand that, is that important? Ask yourself the question, if it broke, broke this, are you reacting to the market? So what I mean by that, if this breaks, let's say for example, would you see that as now a break? And be honest, you can, in the comments below, would you see that as a break and a retest? Is that what you'd be thinking, right? Would you be thinking this? It's broken, there's the support. The previous support is now gonna be new resistance, that's what you'd think. And I used to think exactly the same way. And then now I'm gonna sell that, right? What if I told you, and you can see this in our, our older webinars, you know, I haven't got a crystal ball, we're doing this before it happens. What if we expected this to happen? What if we actually expected this to break it in the same structure and then still move to the upside? That is powerful once you understand those probabilities and those possibilities. So essentially, what happened and what we were looking at with the market is this. So if we take that back, this is just a typical structure, three touch pattern here, as you can see, we've got a one, two, three with that particular structure. And we ask ourselves particular questions to know something's changing. This particular structure is an expectation. So we're expecting this to happen. That's the difference. And when we, rem when we remove it, you can actually see things much more clearer. So we're expecting this to happen because this is just one big continuation. Essentially, if you're following, this is the impulse, this is the corrective phase, and all that happened here, yes, it broke a little bit lower, but that was just an extension of the correction to move to the upside to at least to these highs here. So it's no coincidence that this keeps happening. And I think that what, what really helped me is that, again, I would just always hold trades to, I wouldn't hold them long enough, put it that way. And that would be the difference. So let's put this into perspective. That's just dollar yen on a bigger scale, of course. There's, there's so many examples that we can show you. We'll go to dollar CAD. But think of it like this. Let's say you bank 5%, right? You bank it that way. And then you take just out of probability. Losses are always inevitable, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. You then take a few losses. Imagine that same trade if you could capitalize further. Imagine that same trade you could bank 15%. This isn't risking anymore. You're doing, you just know more about the market in that sense. Now, it's, it's not about, it's not the more that you know about the market, the more successful you'll be, but you still have to know a high level of technical skill, right? So when you're looking at it for that for the perspective, let's say you bank 5% normally, then you take two losses, well, then you're a net 3%. Now take that same trade that you would have banked 5% just by knowing the extra bit of knowledge of patterns, etc., and removing the clutter, you now bank 10% or 12%. Is then that 2% of losses that you take after going to affect your mindset as much? Or are you going to start to see it for what it is and realize, well, hold on a minute, well, 2%, 2 I'm already up 10%, so I'm still net 8% you'll soon start to realize your, your psychology is different as well. So not only does it help you capitalize on more trades, it actually helps with your psychology even further. I mean, looking at this particular trade, which it will help you so much more. So let's say, for example, you can see here on dollar CAD, you can see here in November that you've got one, two resistance there. Would you expect that to be resistance? Maybe. Are you asking yourself questions like, well, when it gets to this resistance, then I'll be interested. Are you saying things like that? Or... Well, do you know what the possibilities, what the probabilities and what's likely to happen? What if we were to say that we expect this to break? I'm expecting this to break this high. And you can see that in the webinars again. This is nothing we haven't already done. So we're expecting this to break above and then drop back down. We're expecting it to get to this low before we create a deeper correction. 
right? So are you, are you, let's say for example, that you do end up seeing this break back below and then it pulls back, there might be a moving average there, etc. and you're looking to sell. Are you going to hold it beyond this support? And be honest, if you're not, then why is that? Is there something else that you need to know? So let's just actually strip that back and actually look at what the structure truly is, in our opinion. Well, firstly, that break of that resistance is actually just an impulse and a correction here. Impulse correction continuation. And if we just literally measure the impulse from here on the break of the pattern, you can see that we're gonna get at least 90% of the impulse, which is what it's done there. So if it's going to at least do 90% of its impulse, then surely it has to break this, right? So we're expecting it to go above. And this is what you call catching people on the wrong side of the market. This is where people are buying the highs, right? They think it's gonna keep going, keep going, and they're almost seeing this as a retest to go higher. When the truth is we're expecting this to come back down and it's based off of the pattern and the structure. So if we draw in that pattern, quite simply, we've got that particular structure. Now you can start to build the picture and you're starting to see this quite commonly in our charts now, why we look at it this way. And I'm mainly making this video because just haven't got the time to answer hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions, right? This is not to uh, slander or anything like that. I would never want it to come across like that way because like I said, I actually have friends that trade support and resistance and use things like EMAs and they do considerably well, right? It's just about, is there a better way that you can actually increase your performance? 100% and we've seen that reflected of hundreds and hundreds of people. But now let's take a look at this structure. Let's actually ignore this part just for a moment actually and just focus on this. 90% rule again. Did we know? And Falcon community, you know exactly what I'm talking about because so many traders made their biggest trades to date and that was really eye-openers for you when we were selling this. So it's broken the res resistance in people's eyes. It's come back down. Would you then close the trade, let's say, here? If you would close it here or would you close it earlier? What if you could keep that all the way? What if there was a 90% probability you would get to here? Not to mention within this leg that there's on the lower degree so many types of entries that you can get involved in that. That is the true analysis of the market where you can fully capitalize. And that's what I want for people. Why wouldn't you? That's the question you want to ask yourself. This is why we're so passionate about trading and within Falcon, we're focusing on the highest level of degree. I think so many people get it confused because they think about, you know, you've heard the saying, right? It is what, 90% psychology and 10% technical. And I think somewhere in that, there's been a bit of lost in translation that people feel that it's, it's their mindset that's holding them back and not realizing that their technical skill is very basic. And I train hundreds and hundreds of traders and when they come in, sometimes their, their, their skill is very basic. All they know is support resistance, EMAs, Fibonacci, previous support, now new resistance. You know, it's very basic stuff that you can learn for free online. This is an in-depth understanding of patterns and not looking at patterns in a basic way right? It's not about saying that's an ascending channel, that's a double bottom, that's a double top or anything like that. It's actually looking at patterns in a totally unique way, which is what we call the override, which Falcon community, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I found this way that people were just looking at patterns, just, you know, singly and saying that pattern should play out this amount of time, not understanding the variables. And this, this comes down from an obsessive amount of backtesting and data to understand how to do that. So I've done all of that. And I, of course, encourage people in the community to do that so you can stay 10 steps ahead. And this is something I'm, I'm so passionate about this because I just know I see it so many times. How many times that people come into the community and drop a comment below if, you know, if this happened to you as well, that you'll come in and I'll get the same email, the same message, the same response that, wow, you know, I've been in three weeks or I've been in one month. This is what's holding me back. I now know the tweaks that I need to make to order to become successful. And it's that level of clarity that you know when you hear it in someone's voice and they send you a voice note and things like that, you can tell this guy or girl is not flirting with the idea of becoming successful no more. No, they know, they understand that if I commit to this and I actually put the work in, I'm, I'm actually going to make this happen. I'm actually, I'm not going to flirt with the idea. I can now see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what I want for people. And that's what I believe that I'm doing. And I'm going to continue to do that over and over again. So I really hope that you've taken those you know, little tiny little tips away from this episode. And the best thing that you could do right now that's going to help you, you know, become even a better trader than what you're doing right now is study patterns, right? It's the, it's the best tip, study patterns and incorporate that into your trading. Ask yourself the question that when you're trading, let's say there's a particular resistance, ask yourself the question, is there a particular 
pattern within the weight. Just one quick example, actually. I'll add in, because it happened previously on pound yen. Let's go to pound yen. If we go to pound yen and we look at this particular structure here, if we just strip all this back for now, we're looking at this structure. So if we look at this, we've just got this basic impulse, correction, continuation. We're expecting this to move to the upside. Now within that, you might have a resistance around here and you can almost see here on the daily as well, you can see those doji formations, you can see it's just decelerated, it's just slowed down and it's followed by an impulse. Now, some people might be thinking, well, that resistance, I think that's coming to the downside. I'm gonna sell that. The truth is when you go to the lower degree, and this is what's gonna help you, is that is there not right here just a continuation pattern? So can you now see impulse, correction, continuation? And if you measure the impulse, put it on the break, 90% of its move to the upside. It's no coincidence, guys and girls. This is just basic impulse and correction theory of how the market's moving. I think this is gonna help you out massively because then you're not gonna hold trades short. So let's say, for example, if you were buying here, if you remember this trade, everyone, if you're buying here off of this double bottom area, right, and within this structure, impulse correction continuation, we have a double bottom within the pattern. If you're taking this continuation to the upside, then are you gonna buy this and then cut your trade short, or are you going to buy it and understand the true power of it that you can double or triple your return? That's the difference. So it might not mean that you're actually doing anything that different. It's just these little tweaks that you need to make. Now within Falcon, of course, we go into much more detail. So you've got the process all the way through. But I believe that anybody, however you're trading, you can incorporate this type of structure into the markets and it can help you out massively. So I hope that helps and I look forward to bringing you more episodes. And again, if you want a full breakdown, then click the link in the description and there's the free training. You can see the whole process and I know it's definitely going to help you out. But I hope you've enjoyed this overall episode and I cannot wait to be bringing you more parts of that. So I hope you enjoyed that guys and girls. I hope the breakdown gave you a bit of perspective and if it resonated with you, then again, I highly recommend that you do check out that free training, which the link is in the YouTube and in the description. It will definitely help you out. And again, it's, it's something that worked massively for me. And if, you, if you're someone that you feel like your trades, that you're cutting your trade short, you feel like you're hold, holding yourself back or you feel like there's gray areas in the market, you're not alone. Hundreds and hundreds of people felt that exact same way. I believe the Falcon is, is really taking everybody's trading to the whole next level. Level. Can you trade in you know different ways? Of course you can. There's not only one way to trade the market. We're under no illusion of that, but we're finding so so much progression within the community. It's just crazy, and you know, we want to share that with as many people as possible. So I'm just off to run some errands at the moment. And again, that's actually just the beauty of being a, a trader in the first place. It's actually not always the the you know the stuff that you see on social media, the uh, you know the glamour side of things. It's actually just having the freedom to go where you want and when you want. And it can be literally you know one o'clock or 11 a.m. on a, uh, a Tuesday morning, and you can just go to the gym if you want, or you can go somewhere else. You can go see your you know your nephews, your niece, etc. Just being able to go see your family. It's actually those little things as well. So just wanted to remind you all that forget about seeing things and comparing yourself to people on social media and actually focus on what is your big why and what do you truly want to get out of it. Going back to the previous videos that I've done, the day in the life. Have you done the day in the life yet? You know, How would you picture your day in the life if you was to be you know, a full-time trader? What would you actually be doing every single day? But guys and girls, again, we've got some new episodes coming in soon that I know you're gonna to take tons of value away from. And I would love to know your number one takeaway from this episode. And anything that you're particularly struggling with, write a detailed comment in the section. What, what's the number one thing that you feel like you're struggling with? I'm gonna actually pick some comments and create another video to help you guys and girls out. Have a great day and I will speak to you in the next episode.